So I'm going to get started uh, uh, building up the um, amplifier. Um, I've changed my mind. I think I will use the QCX, one of the QCXs that I have, the sorry, on 40 meters uh, as the uh, as the source for this. Um, one of the things uh, Hands recommends though is uh, a hardware modification um, because of some problems that uh, that he was encountering with uh, you know with the amplifier. So. This is the hardware modification he suggests. So it's uh, I see uh, basically putting a pull-up resistor from pin 13 um, on IC3. And so if we just pan over to the um, excuse me while I pan this over. If I pan over to where that actually is on the the uh, QCX itself. Um, so pins. So this is IC3, right? Let me just make sure we're in camera here. I'll zoom in a little bit. So this is IC3 right here, um, and this far right pin here is pin 14. This is pin 13, 12, and 11. So these, what he suggests is to connect these two pins together with a 10K resistor. And then you actually sample the five, the five volts comes out of pin 11. So, uh, so what I'll do is I'll make that uh, hardware modification to this QCX. And then we'll have a look at the voltage uh, here at pin 11 on a transmit and make sure that we're getting that 5 volts. And then we'll be ready to move on to uh, the next part. Okay, so I just thought I'd... Uh, I've done the, uh, the little 10K resistor uh, hardware change that uh, was suggested on the website. I just thought I'd check that the, uh, uh, the QCX is receiving and transmitting fine before I go. I haven't, haven't really touched this one for a while, so... So anyway, uh, just to uh, see what I've got set up here, I've got the uh, signal generator injecting a minus 100 dB signal at uh, 7.020 megahertz. Uh, I've got the, uh, the QCX set uh, for the same frequency, and you can see as I adjust the frequency on the QCX. Uh, I get that signal and then obviously as I adjust the amplitude uh, of the incoming signal from the signal generator it should get louder and you can see the uh, signal strength indicator is working there. So that's working. Uh, what I'll do now is, um, let me just turn the speaker down a bit. What I'll do now is uh, basically uh, solder the wire to pin uh, 11 on IC3 and pin 11 of the IC3 is 5 volts on transmit. So I'll get that uh, soldered up and then we'll check. Okay, so I've got the, uh, as you can see here, this is IC3 here, the, the underside of the board, IC3. Uh, I've got the 10K resistor soldered between, let me get that out of the way so you can see it's pins 14, which is right at the end, and pin 13 here. And then I'm tapping off pin 11 here for the transmit signal. So that will be 5 volts. I've also got uh, ground connected here. Uh, that's to pin 7 of IC3. It's a convenient ground. And then I've got the, these two wires coming off. So what I'll do is I'll uh, uh, basically uh, test the voltage output of those two, two wires in the next part. Okay, so it's a bit of a pain uh, holding these on, but uh, basically the configuration for the uh, amplifier is is this is ground, and then the ring is 5 volts, and then the tip is ignored. So when I connect these up, and uh, it's a bit of a dancing act to, to get this done here, so so there I'm, it's in receive mode at the moment, I'm probing, I'm getting 0 volts, and then, uh, <laughs> this is going to be interesting, so let me uh, get my fingers down to the, uh, so as you can see there, as I enable transmit, it goes up to 5 volts. So there's it off, and there's it transmitting. And then finally, just to confirm that uh, we haven't done anything untoward to the uh, receiver itself, is the uh, oscilloscope probing the output. Uh, I've got a dummy load on the um, on the antenna, of course. So I press that and I'm getting a 33.6 volt peak to peak, which is around about 3.8, 3.9 watts, which is more than enough to drive the amplifier. So 
Um, the next step is to move on to uh, hooking up. Uh, let me just pan down to this part of the circuit here. So the net, next step is to uh, uh, hook up this part of the circuit here. So here's where that signal comes in from the, uh, the QCX. So you can see here, this is the tip, uh, sorry, this is the uh, ring. And that's got five volts on transmit and it's grounded on receive. So, uh, and I've got the components laid out here. It's, uh, it's pretty simple. There's a one and a half K resistor here. There's another 10 K resistor here. Uh, there's this capacitor, yeah, a BS 170. And then basically down here is an LED and a four, four, um, 470 ohm uh, resistor. So as five volts comes in here, what we should see is this uh, on five volts, this BS170 will turn on. It'll ground this line here. And as five volts comes in here, we should see this uh, LED turn on as well. Uh, note the shape of the LED. Uh, you take the, uh, the positive side of the, sort of the negative side of the LED and you, you bend that down at 90 degrees and you do this little... Uh, let me just hold this up to the camera so we can we can actually see it. So that's the configuration because ultimately we're gonna. It's not focusing. Ultimately, uh, this actually um, uh, pokes out of the uh, of the side of the uh, of the enclosure. So anyway, I'll get these parts on, and then what we'll do is we'll uh, obviously make sure the LED comes on uh, on transmit, and we'll probe this point here and make sure that. Uh, on transmit it's uh, it's grounded uh, now I don't have this section up here and and I should do that but uh, we can just check this part to start with okay so I've got uh, Q6 um, R15 R14 uh, installed this is the line from the um, from the QCX here so this will be 5 volts on transmit I've got it plugged in here and I have this uh, socket installed too. So as you can see, when I depress the uh, transmit button on the QCX, uh, I get a uh, the LED glows here. Now, unfortunately, I, I can't test any of the voltages around here because this there's no power to the board yet. So I'm going to have to uh, go back and uh, what I'll do is I'll put in um, put in this section here. And uh, so that consists of this other FET here. Uh, I've, I've obviously got to include the power here as well. And then we should be able to test this entire transmit, transmit switch here. So that's to come next. Okay, so those uh, components are installed. Uh, just a few things to note. So the 470 ohm resistor, which is... Uh, R13 is a 2 watt resistor and you have to bend the lead slightly to get it in there. Uh, the other FET, the uh, IRF, uh, IRF U9024, you have to make sure the heatsink side is facing this way. But other than that, it's uh, pretty straightforward getting these in. So let's uh, connect this up and probe around. Okay, so we'll uh, go and test some voltages, but uh, kind of let's walk through uh, at least my understanding of how this uh, this part of the uh, circuit works. So on transmit, you basically have this five volt signal come in, comes into Q6 and Q6 is fully turned on. So this, when Q6 is fully turned on, that drags point B here to ground. When B is grounded, this will turn on this uh, P-channel MOSFET here. Uh, we'll have from V plus here through this resistor divider here. So it'll be at approximately 9 volts here. And this will be connected to ground. So this will be turned on also. And that will pull point A to V plus. So what you will we'll have in this situation is A will be at V plus and B will be grounded. So you can see with A at V plus, that will cause this diode here, this switch, uh, which is uh, switch three, that will be forward biased and thus will, will conduct on transmit. 
So in this case, on transmit, the voltage at B is greater than the uh, is less than the voltage at A. So on receive, we've got the reverse happening. So on receive, this FET here is off, and thus point B will be at approximately V plus. And so we'll have the gate of this uh, P-channel MOSFET will be close to V plus, and it will turn this MOSFET off. And so point A is going to be grounded through this resistor at R7. So in the receive case, we have the case where the voltage at A is less than the voltage at B. And so this diode will be reverse biased and won't conduct. So let's uh, pan over to the um, and test those voltages on the uh, on the board itself. So I've labelled conveniently point A and point B on here, so we can uh, so we can see that. So I've got it uh, receiving at the moment. So let's test the voltage at point B. Hang on, I better pull my uh, better pull my uh, multimeter into the uh, into the picture here. Let's move that across a little bit. So I've got it on the volt scale. So let's test point B here. You can see the point B is at V plus. So I've actually got this set at about 18 and a half volts. And point A, which is this resistor right here, a bit hard to get to, is grounded. So in the receive case, we have uh, the situation where the voltage at A is less than the voltage at B, and the uh, diode, this diode here, is reverse biased. So on transmit, you have the reverse situation happening. So let's uh, press the transmit. Again, I've got my uh, QCX uh, going through a, uh, uh, a dummy load. So when we press transmit, you can see the voltage at point B is close to ground. And the voltage at point A is at V plus. So in this case, we have the voltage at A is greater than the voltage at B. And so in that case, the, this diode is forward biased and will conduct. Now, in order to complete the, uh, complete the switch, I really do need to uh, Bear with me for a moment. I've got a few wires hanging around here. I do need to complete this side of the circuit over here. So you can see here, I've got A and B coming over to this side, to this diode here, which is the uh, transmit switch number one here. So and the, the same situation will happen when A is greater than B, and that's the case where on transmit, this diode will be forward biased. And so we'll have conduction through here. When in receive case, the voltage at B is going to be greater than the voltage at A. This diode is going to be reverse biased. And there'll be no conduction through here. So anyway, that's at least my understanding of, uh, of how this works. Uh, uh, if, uh, if I'm wrong, please correct me. Um, that, that's at least my, uh, I guess, simple-minded way of uh, understanding this. So with that... Uh, Step two, uh, steps one and two out of the way. We'll move on to step three, which is uh, completing this uh, this switch here, um, and the uh, the input uh, uh, RF jack and uh, the input attenuation of the three dB attenuator here. So that'll be in the next video.